Hey guys, it's Tyler here and welcome back to another episode of Dishes and Fishes where I show you how to cook and set hooks. Today we're going to talk about a technique that works all year round and is definitely something that you need to have in your fishing arsenal, whether you're fishing for largemouth or smallmouth, and that is the drop shot. So drop shotting is a finesse technique where you use a weight to hold your soft plastic to the bottom and you kind of shake or drag it back to the boat. Based on what type of cover you're fishing, whether that be open water with a rocky bottom or into some laydowns or some grass, that's going to affect the leader length that you use. But in general you want to stick with some light fluorocarbon line, a finesse hook, and a leader with a weight on the bottom. Now, if you're like me, you probably have tried drop shotting in the past, got frustrated with it, and set it down because, let's face it, it's kind of boring. It takes some patience. I'd much rather catch them cranking or jerk baiting or spinner baiting or throwing a jig. A lot of the time, you just can't force fish to eat what you want them to eat, and that's when I turn to something like the drop shot. So let's talk about a few considerations to make whether you're fishing for largemouth or smallmouth. I would consider drop shotting a pretty decent search bait. It's not going to do the same thing as like a swim bait or a crank bait, but it's something that you want to cast out and work back to the boat. And it's great because you can fish at any depth. You can fish it shallow or you can fish it 20, 30 feet if you want. So let's talk about some key things here. The first thing is your setup. So again, this is a finesse presentation. So you want to ideally throw this on spinning tackle. I like to use eight or 10 pound braided line and I like to use eight to 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. There's some instances on super clear lakes where guys will downsize to six pound just to kind of hide the bait a little bit better for smallmouth. But I think in general, if you stick with eight to 10 pound braid and eight to 10 pound fluorocarbon, you're gonna get bites. Now let's talk about the hook. So one thing you want in a hook is it to be very sharp. There's a few different hooks that I like to use depending on whether I'm fishing for smallmouth or largemouth. Let's talk about smallmouth. So typically the presentation when you're fishing for smallmouth, you're going to be nose hooking the plastic like this. And you're gonna be using a smaller hook. Now, if you simply just Google drop shot hook, a lot of the time the hooks they send you will be too small in my opinion. I find myself losing a lot of fish on them, especially right next to the boat. So what I recommend doing is upsizing your hook a little bit to a finesse Nico hook, which is what I have on here. And there's two hooks that I use for this. First is this owner sniper finesse hook. And again, this is something that I double dip when I throw Nico rig too, because it's super sharp. Owner in general makes some pretty solid hooks. Their treble hooks are also razor sharp. And the other hook that I like to use is also in this package and I have it tied on right here is a trocar finesse hook. If you look at the hook point on this trocar hook, it has a nice bevel to it, and you really, really get nice hook penetration when fishing for smallmouth. Now for largemouth, I'll usually throw a larger hook. When I'm fishing for largemouth, I'm usually throwing this thing in wood or on the outside of grass lines. In my largemouth presentation, I like to throw a grip pin hook like this. You can throw a wide gap hook if you want to, probably a size three or four. But I find that this grip pin hook helps my soft plastic stay on this bait when I'm dragging it through stuff. But again, you just want to get a nice sharp hook and just up the size a little bit if you're targeting largemouth. Now let's talk about the soft plastics that I like to use. Something very interesting about smallmouth is they have small mouths. So generally, I like to throw a nice, short, compact, soft plastic. There's a handful of them that'll work, but there's two that have really shined for me this past year. First is this Zoom Trick Shot Z. Trick Shot, Trick Shot Z. It works super well. This was great for me on the St. Lawrence River. Probably all the Great Lakes, you could catch them on with this. It's also great around my local lakes in Connecticut. I also like the Z-Man plastics because they're stretchy, and I find that you can get a lot of bites out of one soft plastic. Any soft plastic this shape, nose hooked, is gonna catch smallmouth. Now, if you've been living under a rock and you've missed the boat on this other bait, it's not too late. You'll have to find it on eBay or something, but I am absolutely astounded at how well this Berkeley Max Scent flatworm works. Now, if you watch the pros, Bassmaster Elites, Major League Fishing, all those guys absolutely slayed them this summer with the Berkeley Max Scent flatworm. So, naturally, I had to delve in. 
I was a little hesitant at first to kind of jump on the bandwagon here, but I'm so glad I did because there's no doubt in my mind this is the best smallmouth soft plastic that I've thrown. Not only does it generate a ton of bites, but it generates quality bites. I've caught a lot of four pound smallies this summer using this Berkley Maxent flatworm. So those are just the two soft plastics that I like to throw. I think in general, if you stick with that shape, that profile, that nose hook, nice sharp hook, you're still gonna get bites on smallmouth. Smallies relate more to open water scenarios, offshore humps, rock piles. Those are the areas that you wanna target with these baits. You can find smallmouth deep all year long. I like fishing for smallmouth more. Drop shotting is on my deck all year long. Now let's talk about largemouth. There's times of the year, every month of the year, where the fish just aren't shallow. They're not biting what you want them to bite. And that's when you have to throw a drop shot. So when I'm fishing for largemouth, again, I up my hook size a little bit, and I'll also up my soft plastic size. Any worm like this X-Zone finesse worm is gonna work. You could also throw a Sanko if you want to, but I like to throw a finesse worm because when it's underwater and I'm shaking it, I find that that crazy tail does a little bit more action than a Senko. And I try to stick with this tapered shape with some type of ribbon tail or modified tail on it. A big difference when drop shotting for largemouth as well is you can Texas rig your bait as opposed to nose hooking it. That's gonna help you when you're fishing through cover, especially if you have that grip pin hook on it. These worms are also really good for Nico rigging, by the way. That's why I keep a few in here with my nail weight and my O-rings on them. That way I'm not messing with them on the water. Now let's talk about the weight finally. The weights come in two different shapes usually. There's this cylinder shape. I can't remember the what it's called on the packaging, but it looks like that. And then there's like a ball shape. I like to throw as light of a drop shot weight as I can and still get that bait to the bottom. So like today, it's absolutely glass conditions out here. I'm not gonna have any problem getting this 1 8 ounce drop shot weight to the bottom. But if it's windy and I'm fishing deeper, I'm gonna up the weight size a little bit in order to get that bait to the bottom quickly. So that covers the rod the line, the hook, the plastic, and the weight. Now let's try to catch some fish. One thing you wanna make sure you do when you're drop shotting is not necessarily dropping the bait right on top of fish. Sometimes that works, but you wanna to try to cast and drag and hop it back to the boat. So I'm gonna make sure when I cast my line out, I'm gonna watch my high-vis braid, and I'm gonna make sure that that bait hits the bottom. I'm gonna watch for when my line stops moving. It's moving, it's moving, it's moving, it's moving. And now I got slack line, I know that bait's on the bottom. Another thing that I see people doing is having their rod tip low. So that's great for a lot of baits, but drop shotting is one of the few presentations where you want your rod tip high. That's gonna keep that weight contact with the bottom, keep that bait up, and you're gonna feel every single nibble. When you get a bite on the drop shot, you don't have to swing really hard on the hook set. You kinda just wanna lean back and they call it reel setting a lot of the time. You just wanna lean back and give it a crank. And if you have a nice sharp hook on there like we talked about, it's gonna do the job. And again, I used to dread drop shotting. I used to just not think it was very fun. It takes patience and it didn't produce for me right off the bat because I wasn't using the right gear and I wasn't using the right technique. So if you fish all day long and you're banging the banks and there's nothing there, you gotta go deep. And this is a great technique for that. There's a bite. So this is a small fish, really small fish, embarrassingly small. And that's another thing about uh, drop shotting. I shouldn't have swung on that, this little pumpkin seed, but uh, I got a fast trigger hand. Yeah, so this is a good example of making an adjustment. So I came out here with the intention of catching a few drop shot fish. I'm not graphing much. I'm not getting many bites except for the bream and whatnot. So I'm gonna try to fish shallow, but try these things out, drop shotting on your own, and see how it works for you. Thanks for watching.